I can't believe it. It's nearly winter time again. What the hell happens to a bloke's life? If you just go poof and it's all happening. I was rolling around at three o'clock this morning in bed going, oh my God, all these things I have to do. And it's, I don't know, it's something about being older. You start thinking, Struth, how am I going to fit it all in? When I was young and I'd wake up at three o'clock and I'd figure, well, I've had enough sleep and I'd pop out of bed and have a bit of quick bite to eat and bugger off on the tractor and do some spraying. Now I'm old and delir and bloody weary. I just lay there in bed going, fuck, I haven't go back to sleep, dude. We're just going to show you a little bit of wintering, which is highly complicated because it depends on where you are. Luckily in Australia, we're not going to get any snow where we happen to live here in South Oz. But if you happen to be in Canada where it's friggin' freezing its tits off, that's a whole nother episode. So you go and check them out. The Canadian dude over there, he's got some good ideas. But for me down here in Oz, it doesn't snow. And what's more, we're going to pick these ladies up and take them to somewhere where it's a bit warmer. But we're going to kind of do a bit of a look through, show you a few options as to what you can do if you can't pick your bee box up and bugger it off to somewhere warm. Come over here and we'll check this out. I'm just wondering if I can put my other hat. That's your bee suit anyway. I don't know that how there could be so many different sort of blooming size zips. You would think we could just have one zip for everybody, but no, no, nobody zips go. It's like, it's like when you're trying to put a bloody imperial nut on a metric bolt and that's not any fun. Anybody out there that's tried that can testify to the fact that it's a bad idea. Anyway, I've got my grubby, I've got my suit which is all grubby eyed because I was crawling around in a 20 year old beehive the other day and she's just a bit grubby. So I'm hoping to take my hood off of here and put on my other new suit. And maybe it might be more convenient in the non-sun area, but time will tell. <laughs> John made me feel better this morning though. He says, do you, does your brain get foggier as you get older? And I thought, yeah, it does. But then you get to a certain point, it's so foggy you don't give a shit anymore. So maybe I'm at that point. Now, what have we got here? This suit is what we're looking for. <laughs> I wonder if the BB company <laughs> who make these suits actually use the same zip. Now one would hope, one would hope they would since it's the same company, but who knows, they might get zips from different places. It's a mystery, we will find out go the right way you drop kick right let's see whether that'll go well it's looking promising it's facing the same way look at that see now there's a very good thing now there's a something you should remember i don't know how many bloody bee suits i actually own but plenty but this would be the first time that i've actually got a bee suit and the zip hoods are changeable without bloody well because they are changeable because it's just, they haven't changed the zip. They've kept the same cool zip. Thank you, Mr. BB Wear. I was just thinking about one of those instructional videos that most people would be watching at the moment. Now you need to light your smoker and steadily blow your bellows until the smoke comes bellowing out the top. No, I don't even, can't even do a serious voice, can I? <laughs> anyway, you'll need your smoker going for this project. Pick a nice day, preferably not when it's too windy or going to rain too heavily or at all. No raining and no bloody icy cold wind, all right? Rule number one. So if you, the good thing about beekeeping in winter is the weather's crap. You can just sit on the couch with your bottle of port and go, screw it, I'll do it tomorrow. Or perhaps you should end up in the shed painting boxes. But at least painting boxes in your shed, you can still drink port. So there's been much discussion behind the camera as to where we should start. And I thought we'd actually just start at the start. So that'd be something different, wouldn't it? <laughs> Rather than in the middle. So we've just come over here and we'll have a look in this little box. So this is, these ones along here, these are our splits and the other side are the originals. So we'll have a look in both of them. I've just been watching the girls while I've been waiting for the cameraman to get his act together. And um, there's not a lot of pollen coming in. So uh, the pollen must have gone off the last couple of weeks. The ladies don't seem to have too much pollen on their legs when they're flying back in. So that's a good rule of thumb is to have a bit of an observation as to what they've got on them when they come in. And sometimes when you're wondering about how the nectar flow is going, if you watch the ladies when they come into the bee box, they'll land a bit different when they're loaded up with nectar because they'll sort of be heavier. And they'll, rather than if they haven't got any nectar, they'll come flying in and just stick their legs on the box and walk in. Whereas when they're heavy, they'll fly in and sort of land and then have to wander in. So it's, but that's probably hard to explain. But just remember, sitting by your bee box watching them on the outside can tell you a lot about what's going on inside. And you don't even have to pull their lid off. But being that it's a winter inspection, we have to pull their lid off. 
as long as the weather holds. So we might not get it all done, but we'll have a look for you. Oh, does that mean I have to kneel down? Oh, it's a long way down there. <laughs> anyway, it's easier to kneel down than to do anything else. Just, oh, I tell you what, you know, this is the problem. You get to this point, you think, damn, I forgot my hive tool. Could you go and get it for me? Nah, golly gosh. Uh, anybody out there in the internet like to go and get my hive tool for me? No, nah, that's a no. It was a resounding no all round. I'll be back. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Four. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look. Don't be stuffing around in your beehive too much in the cold weather. You don't want to be leaving them open and getting a chill. Just remember if there is babies in here, the babies like to be nice and snugged up and all the girls are huddling up together. They're rubbing their little wings or buzzing their little wings and wiggling their little tails and trying to keep their babies warm. So don't be a bloody annoying human being and leave them out in the cold so as you kill the brood because brood's pretty valuable at this time of year. Don't be in a hurry, but don't stuff around too long. Like don't leave the box open, go and have a cup of tea and, and a biscuit. Poke that up there a bit. Shouldn't be stuck down too much. We'll just let them breathe that smoke in so they all think, what the heck? Nice and gentle, not too exciting because you don't want to upset them. The last thing you need them to do is waste any more energy than they're already using up to stay warm. That looks good actually, this one. Oh, it's a good pick. Okay, so it's the same rules as always. Just you want to wiggle your frames backwards and forwards a little bit until you get an opening. I like to start with the second from the outside. Just lift it up nice and gentle. Now the ladies are not going to be happy to see me because it's bloody cold. And they're in here with their blankets on their knees and they're going, what are you doing? We won't pull our bloody house to bits at the minute. We're probably fractionally early because of um, filming constraints, but just do it in the afternoon when it's nice. If you've got a little bit of honey, you want to be looking to see how much honey they've got. You can do that by lifting the box as well for a bit of weight. They've got a bit of honey stored around the edge, so they're not going to go hungry. What do we got here? Have a bit of a look-see to see what we've got going on, see if we can find any brood. Like I said, I think the pollen's really dried up here at the minute. And I don't know, especially these young ones, I'm not sure how many, how much pollen they had stored up because they were breeding like crazy. Here's the queen, we've got a bit of a queen running, so that's good. And there's a bit of brood underneath here. That's good, she's still laying a few little larvae in there. She's got some hatched up, some capped brood. And so they're making a little ball, obviously in the middle of their hive, just keep nice and warm. As it gets colder, they get more congested inside like towards the middle, further away from any extremities, of course. And they'll lay their brood in a little ball in the middle. And the queen will be in there keeping warm and the girls will be keeping all the babies warm. And then the plan is to keep them all happy and healthy. So when we get to spring, they just pop out of the box and go, woohoo, it's honey time. So when you're doing your inspection and you actually might see something that you don't like in the brood frames, like especially where the young brood is, just shake the bees off so you can have a proper inspection. But other than that, I don't like to disturb them any more than I have to because they're already upset and <laughs> running amok. That gets back to depending on how warm the day is and how many you've got to do, of course. But at the minute, for the fact that they're here in the blooming freezing cold country, they're looking pretty good. They're a little bit upset to see us, I think, but still, <laughs> they haven't attacked me yet. Oh, that's a nice heavy frame, that's good. There's not a lot of nectar coming in that I can see. There's no unripe, much unripened nectar. But they have got some honey reserves which I've stored up earlier, which is good. And that's actually a good thing because it can be a bit risky if you have too much unripened honey and you do a big move. You can, they can all get stuck in all the honey that gets, well, with the, you know, the nectar that gets shaken out of the frame. So. so they're actually just building this out a little bit. I reckon they have had a little bit of nectar and they've just used it up and gone back to the middle of the box. Oh no, here we go, here's a little bit here. So you know, this is your fresh nectar coming in that they're just storing up, so that's a good sign. You wanna see that, especially this time of year. That means you probably don't have to feed them so much. If you don't see anything like that coming into your box, you know you, you probably should consider getting your sugar water out and giving them something to eat. I reckon for that little, for this particular box, that'll probably do us. We'll just put it back together before we upset anybody too much. Just put your frames back where you got them from, just move everybody back across again. The last thing they need in the middle of winter is any more stress than they're already under. So just, yeah, like always anyway, try to remember to put your brood box back the way you found it. Put our mat back on, keep everybody a bit toasty. There's so many different forms of mats too. We've just got a bit of vinyl there from an old carpet, a bit of lino. You can have yours made out of wood. You can have them made out of sort of industrial plastic stuff. 
hell. I'm sure if you Google that crap, there's so many options, it's a bit like everything else in beekeeping. We'll have a bit of a poke in this one. Actually, we might go over, is that by itself so I can get to it easier? We might just have a bit of a look in a double box. If you've got a double box, that might be another excitement because these, these probably were building up and I think the flow went off before they've got too much up in these boxes, but we'll have a bit of a look in here and see whether we want to put the hive mat down on top of the brood box or whether we want to take this super away altogether. So decisions to be made at the minute. Now you've got a double box, of course. If you've got a triple box and just definitely take the top one off of that because that's just crazy. You do not want a triple story box in the middle of winter. That's just way too much room for everybody to keep warm. And all that's probably gonna happen is the top box, if unless it's perfectly sealed, somebody hungry next door will get excited and wanna rob you out. So take the top box away. If there is some honey frames in the third box up here and there's not much honey down here for storage, put those honey frames down the bottom. Give the lady something to eat during winter. If they don't need it during winter, you can always harvest it next spring. So, yeah, patience is a virtue. Hello, girls. Nobody's come out to welcome us. We'll see what's going on. Hopefully someone's in here. Oh, that's always fun when you go to the bee yard and there's nobody home. There's definitely no one home up the top. <laughs> Hello, what's going on? Oh, there's noise. There is some noise down there. We'll just pop our top off here. Let's pop that off there. Pop that over here for a minute and see how everybody's getting on. Actually, there's more population in there than you'd think. Have a look at that. I've got the bloody thorn bush stuck in my box. That was a bit bad. <laughs> that would have been fun when we come to pick it up. Sorry, girls. Ugh. Right, let's get a bit of pruning. Not that you want too much smoke, but a little bit of smoke's always good. Pop this over here. And we'll have a look. There's actually quite a lot of population in here, so this will be the next question to be answered in a minute. But we'll have a list of a bit of a peekaboo and see what the girls are up to, and then we'll make a rash decision. What do you reckon, chicks? You happy to see us? They're saying, hello, Bush Bee Man. Where have you been? We've been here in the cold all by our lonesome. Would you like to come in and have some honey biscuits? <laughs> Maybe not, they said. Oh, yeah, see, they, well, there you go. Even though, maybe they're just in here all ripening up their stores. Just make sure when you, this time of year especially, make sure you don't have your queen on the frame that you put outside the box, because the last thing you want to do is have Her Majesty sitting out here in the cold. Lift that one up as well, have a bit of a look. See where the boss is. They're obviously not rocking off their ass because I mean, it is winter here. Well, not really winter, but getting into May. So it's sort of, what's the last month of autumn, isn't it? Because June's when winter starts in Australia. In America, it's June's kind of summertime, isn't it? I think, because they're halfway around the, halfway opposite to us. So maybe we'll just move to America. It'll be a bit bloody warmer than it is here right at the minute. One degree back home, but it was only, it's about 12 here at the moment, so it's not ideal, but the wind's not blowing and the sun's out, so, but just be a bit aware that you shouldn't be here full arsing around when it's too, too miserable. These girls will be happy to be moved to somewhere a bit easier foraging. So that'll be cool, we'll get a, I reckon, so if you stay tuned, you might get to see me give my truck a run for the first time, that'd be cool. Oh, well, I hope it goes a lot better than the bloody 150th episode when that truck was out to go on the road. This truck's a bit more improved than that version, so maybe we can have a cross-reference from where I started to where I am. Go flick back to episode 150. It was about a year ago-ish was when we were trying to get a truck, and it was a little bit of a disaster. So hopefully this journey is a bit better because it's a lot further, and we're a lot further away from home, so... And I think the truck's heavier, so we might not be able to tow it home. Maybe we'll just push it in a hole in the side of the road and forget about it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> shush, I digress. There was a little bit of brood on that one that I just pulled up. We'll have a look at this frame here. And then I haven't seen the queen yet. They're basically hatching out. Oh yeah, no, she's still laying a little bit, which is good, not very much. But it's a good sign if they're still laying a little bit, that means they're usually finding a little bit of pollen. Freaks me out when they don't lay anything because that means they're either missing out on nectar or, or the pollen. Get real excited if you're at home and you can't move them to a better foraging source. You can get some pollen patties or some dry pollen. You can get all excited and get some soy flour. And Talking about that, I was talking to a dairy farmer dude 
and apparently that's where the whole bee feeding idea came from because the when the bees were near a dairy farm the bees would go into the flower sacks or the or the whatever the hell they fed the cows back in the day and they would carry off all the flour back to the nest so i guess the beekeepers thought what the hell is all this bees coming back to my hives all covered in white crap and then they went from there and started developing pollen feed or pollen substitutes so Men think they're smart, but I think the bees were smart enough to tell them what was going on. We were just interpreting what should happen. I reckon she's going along quite nice. I'm fairly happy with that for a split late in the year, so I think they should be good. We'll get them down to some nice, bit more easier foraging. They should go through winter really nicely, I reckon, and come out the other end as a very productive hive for next season. Now comes an interesting decision. They don't actually need this super, so they're a blooming wasting a whole lot of energy trying to keep that warm, although they're... Um, they're doing a good job. So you have a couple of options. You can either put your hive mat down on top of your brood box and put your super back on so you know which super's which, which is not a bad idea as long as I've got a bit of room around the, around the actual mat. So that'll, that'll stay nice and warm under there. The catch to doing this though is you better bloody remember that you've got to take it out when you get out, of, when you get out the other end of winter because otherwise you'll come in here and it's not good if they get overheated. But that's, a, that's one thing you can do. Oh, and just put your super back on. And then you can put your queen excluder at the top so you know where you are. Hopefully you'll remember that your mat's in the middle if you've got your queen excluder on the top. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's just what I do. Oh, my leg's going to sleep. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Oh, get up. Ow. Does anybody else do that? I'll have to get a chair to sit on, I think. <laughs> All right, I'm fairly happy with that. We might, we might have a look whilst we're full arsing around. We'll have a look at one of the angry bee boxes before we go and we'll decide, depending on what they've got for food storage, I'll show you a different idea to actually let them move into their brood, move their brood up into where the nectar is or where the honey's stored and that can work too. I think most of these hives we split and we put the honey resources between everybody so we might have to go to a different spot to show you that. So of course with beekeeping there's always more than one way to skin a cat. If you're wanting to winter your bees and you've got some honey in your super box, you can always just do what I'm about to do over here. So this is another option. I was just feeling the weight of this box and it's fairly heavy, so it might be a good demonstration for another idea. Just give them a little puff. Calm them down a little bit, maybe, if I'm lucky. These girls have still got a bit of a bad temper, so. <laughs> but they maybe they're chilled out. Perhaps I visited the neighbours and said, you know, you don't have to be a real angry bitch, you can just charm down. It's not the end of the world when the humans turn up. They don't mean you any harm, actually. Do you reckon bees can talk to each other like that? I don't think so, but... Anyway, we'll have a bit of a look in here. What are you doing, chicky babes? It looks like it could be another good season down here in the summer. The trees are budding up nice. They've had a bit more rain down here, so... Fingers crossed. Beekeeping might be turning the corner in Oz. We've had a pretty bad run the couple of years. It's fairly hectic up the top here, so that's a good start. That's usually a good sign. We just push things apart a bit. Generally, if you just poke your head over the top, you can see whether at least the top of the frames are full. And it looks like there's a bit of honey in there. And these are some new frames that we popped in here when we, did, did when we were down here during the summer. This was perhaps not as strong a box as some of the others that we did a split on, but it looks like they've done pretty good because that's a, that's a new bit of honey from this season. New frame, bit of honey. So if you're really miserable and you desperately needed some honey for your toast, you could probably nick a frame out of here, but we're not going to do that today because we didn't actually come here to harvest any honey. A little bit more smoky fine. We've upset them. <laughs> I reckon this looks like it's actually got quite a bit of honey up here. Come on, you can do it. Beautiful. Look at you chicks go. Oh, wow. Woohoo. Now, another idea for wintering your bees. If you've got a bit of honey in your super, I mean, this has actually probably got more honey than I expected. I was, if you've got, I don't know, three or four frames of nice capped honey, a good idea if I can get this frame back in my box <laughs> is you can just pop your super off. Pop that over here somewhere. Oh, that's heavy. Ah. Now then you've got your little brood box, of course. I showed you on that other box over there that wasn't so strong that you could put your hive mat on top of your brood nest and put your super back on and just keep everything nice and cosy. But this is a different idea because we've got plenty of honey up top. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our queen excluder off. If I can get it off without bending it. 
such as it is. Now we're just going to take our queen excluder off, tap off a bit of the muck, pop that up the top. So now the thing is, because the brood box is where all the activity is going on with all the breeding and all the laying and all the feeding and all the carry on, if you take your queen excluder and leave it on top of your super box, the girls will actually, when they're wintering as a cluster, they'll wriggle upstairs and they'll actually turn a little ball and they'll use the edge of the honey and they don't have to go up there and get the honey to bring it back down to the brood box because it's all just there. So they'll, and they're all nice and warm and it keeps your honey warm and it makes it easier for them to feed on it. Just remember when it comes to harvesting the honey in spring, you gotta shake all the girls downstairs again and put your queen excluder on top of your brood box so as you can take your honey away. Or if you wanna get excited, it's a pretty simple way to make a split, which is what happened here. When we came here, if you saw earlier, we had the brood in the middle of the box and so we thought that was a pretty simple way to make some splits. So that's another option too. But a good way to keep them over winter, to keep them fed, is to take your queen excluder out of the way, let the brood, let the queen move upstairs, make their home in the honey, and what the hell anyway, if you don't need every drop of honey that the girls have produced, so you can get some next year. And then we're gonna pop our super back on the top. Oh, without the queen excluder, line them up a bit. Put our mat on top of the queen excluder. Put our lid on top of there. And then, when you come back and do your spring inspection, put your queen excluder back in the middle again. Of course, there is a percentage of beekeepers that don't even use queen excluders at all, so. You know, I kind of like it because it just makes management easy, but if you don't want to use them, that's cool as well. Horses for courses, as the saying goes, or maybe be ideas for different beekeepers. <laughs> do what works for you. So that's a bit of a quick overview on how to do your overwintering. As per you would have read, different books, different ideas, there's so many different options that does your head in, and it really depends on where you are temperature wise. If you're somewhere that's really cold, you gotta keep them warm. But the basic principle of wintering, of course, is that the more area that they have to keep warm, the harder it is for them. So depending on how many bees you've got, you don't want any more space than they need. If you can imagine this is a whole chamber full of air, and the girls have to make a little cluster, and of course it's like a cold breeze. It's a bit like when you leave your bathroom door open, and the air conditioner's trying to heat your house up. The draft from the bathroom keeps whifting into the rest of your house. So it's kind of that principle, you know, you shut your door to keep the house warm. So it's a similar concept with this. The girls have just got less area to warm, the easier it is for them. Well, I reckon that's looking like it's coming together fairly nicely. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if you stay tuned, next week you can see the truck in action. And I'll be able to sing that song, Gone Trucking. I haven't got a horn that I can blow, but still, it's going to be cool.